The 2023 Physics Nobel Prize was awarded for creating light pulses that are so short that it is hard to comprehend just how short they really are. In fact, in 2018, the Physics Nobel Prize was given for femtosecond pulses of light, but this technique is a thousand times faster in the attosecond regime. But why is faster better? What benefits does this research bring? And does it deserve a Nobel Prize? Let's discuss it. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has decided to award the 2023 Nobel Prize in Physics in equal shares to Pierre Agostini, Ferenc Krauss, and Anne Luyer for experimental methods that generate attosecond pulses of light for the study of electron dynamics in matter. The invention of attosecond light pulses started a brand new field of research referred to as attosecond chemistry, which aims to image the motion of electrons through molecules, which is only possible because of how fast the light pulses are. Let's take a second to appreciate just how short an attosecond is. It is so short that the number of attoseconds that have occurred in one second is the same number of seconds that have occurred in the lifetime of the universe. This speed is vital to developing our understanding of molecules, as this is the speed at which electrons move. The atoms in molecules move around a thousand times slower in the femtosecond regime. But to fully understand the chemistry of molecules, you need to probe their electrons, not just their atoms. For a long time, we didn't think that we would ever be able to see these electrons because we were under the impression that the shortest pulse of light possible was in the femtosecond regime. And even producing femtosecond light was worthy of a Nobel Prize. But this work smashed through that threshold and opened up the world of electrons. This Nobel Prize is also significant because Anne Luo is only the fifth woman to ever receive the Nobel Prize in Physics, joining the ranks of Marie Curie in 1903 for her research into radiation, Maria Goppert Meyer in 1963 for discoveries concerning nuclear shell structure, Donna Strickland in 2018 for creating femtosecond laser pulses, and Andrea Geertz in 2020 for discovering the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. Quite amusingly, Professor Liu was teaching when she won the Nobel Prize. She took the phone call during a break in her lecture, finding out that she had won the Nobel Prize, and then went back in to keep teaching. She happened to mention to her class that she would have to leave a little early, at which point the students understood what that meant and started clapping. Lulier, you won the, this year's Nobel Prize in Physics. A big congratulations to you. Thank you. What are your feelings right now? Uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel very happy. It's... But why are short pulses in light worth not just one, but two Nobel Prizes in five years? It all comes down to our ability to image something fast. A hummingbird flaps its wings around 50 times per second. So we need a higher frame rate camera so we can slow down the footage in order to see them flap. But this is only on the time scale of milliseconds, which is actually quite slow. There are very expensive cameras out there that can go much faster than this. The slow-mo guys have a great video where they show a bullet being shot through an egg at various frame rates up to an amazing 1 million frames per second. That is one microsecond per frame. Bullets are fast, but they look like they're standing still in comparison to electrons. An attosecond is a trillion times faster than a microsecond. In order to image this type of frame rate, you need a way to generate frames. In a camera, you might have a physical or electrical shutter that blocks the light, reads out the pixels, and resets them for a new frame. For faster time frames, we need to switch something that can change faster than these traditional methods. And light is a good choice. But even for light, it is hard to make pulses that are so short. Thus the Nobel Prize. In 1987, Anne Luer and colleagues performed an experiment where they took a bright infrared laser and shone it through a noble gas. 
They then looked at the light coming out of this gas and noticed something. There were additional harmonics or overtones, meaning that the noble gas had produced light at different frequencies to the initial laser pulse. The important thing is that these different frequencies of light will interfere with each other. And if performed correctly, they will constructively and deconstructively interfere to produce a train of laser pulses. In 2001, Agostini and Krauts showed that they could control these pulses and tune their width in order to produce an attosecond laser pulse in various different ways, which allowed scientists to start to investigate attosecond physics in a precise way. But what are the applications of these pulses? Why do we even care what electrons are doing on this time scale? By locating electrons in molecules, we can start to understand molecular interactions better, which is important in chemistry, biology, medicine, and much more. Understanding these interactions allows us to make better drugs and vaccinations, produce better molecular sensors, and develop screening methods for cancer that would otherwise not be possible. On the other side, ultra-fast light pulses can switch an insulator into a conductor in a femtosecond, which could be used in computing. Considering most computer processors operated in the hundreds of picosecond regime, 100,000 times slower than a femtosecond, this could lead to processes that are significantly faster than what we have today. So did attosecond light pulses deserve a Nobel Prize? Yes, it did. It led to a whole new field of research that has implications for a lot of science and technology. But it is also important to keep in mind that this all started with fundamental research. When they began, they had no idea that they would discover something so amazing. But that is why fundamental research is so important. Nowadays, we have to justify how our research will have impacts on society in the short term. This makes justification of fundamental research much harder, and thus it is not often funded. We need to remind ourselves that fundamental research can lead to Nobel Prize worthy discoveries. Every year new Nobel Prizes are given. The last two in physics were for climate change and quantum entanglement. Check out these videos here to learn more.